Hello there everyone and thank you for rejoining me here in the mod that I played too much to you know the last season of Peter Pan and which we're playing as of course everyone's favorite America America but we've got to be fun in our colleges here you know while I'm entering secondary schools to present much greater res and resources intensive problems in higher education college education is nonetheless vital to more skilled professions in the job market Funds of public and private universities will receive the bulk of our attention, perhaps in exchange for practice to give opportunities to less advantaged applicants. Either way, higher education is in need of financial assistance uh, or federal assistance, and the cost of allowing higher education to deteriorate is much greater than the proposed federal funding. Funding our schools. The Elementary and Secondary Education Act has massively stimulated the flow of money from the federal government to America's classrooms, but one act can hardly cover an entire nation. Some states are more in need of aid than others, and to address individuals' issues, funds will need to be allocated via earmarks and other grants. Local administrations often face unique issues specific to their area ex that extend beyond low incomes. The Johnson administration will provide a helping hand to level the playing field. We've got some comments to go through as well. And what do we have over here? Decisions. we got a lot of stuff going on. We're still trying to finish off this stupid little war here, so we'll see how well we can do. Um, there's open conflict now over there over here. We want to help the Federal Republic of the Congo and we can send a whole two volunteers, which is okay with me we send volunteers yes, no, maybe so Maybe not So looking okay ish here Angola Public college scholarships. This is a complaint of the. No, let's see. Oh, oh there goes on gold. Well, thanks a lot. Of the HEA. As an expansion of federally provided scholarships to distinguished students applying for college admittance. Part of the bill would be far less controversial and be more likely to engender more broad support across party lines, barring disagreement over the minutia of who's chosen to receive the scholarships, how they're administered, and how much their scholarships would be worth. The primary concern with well, this bill is the same as always. The financial burdens of the federal government grow with each year, and the budgetary concerns must be considered when bringing all proposals to the table. Aside from the extremists basing their arguments on racial logic, most opposition to the HEA is organizing around rhetoric arguing for financial considerations. The educational debates, being as fierce as they have been, it could ultimately be best to avoid such a commitment and to move on to the next item on the Great Society agenda. No birds who get to ensure the survival and success of liberty. We have barely the government for, uh, further under spending it cannot afford. I don't know what you're talking about. And we should be done here by now. And just go ahead and hopefully just, just, okay, good job. And we're back in Africa. Well, fantastic. That's what I always wanted to do. Go back to Africa. Led by Mr. Attack. Led by Mr. Attack. West Merlin. I know he wanted to come back. Confessions of a Rubber Worker. Um, if you want to, I think I've read this before. So, if you want to read this, please go ahead. A bombshell report. Economic reconstruction of West Africa falls slightly behind. Ooh, that's not good. We should really keep an eye on that because that stuff is not easy to do, like I said in the last episode. So, that's into air. We're doing all that stuff already. Um, at this point, I don't care. What do we have around here? Temp tax, yearly surplus, not very much. Oh. oh, it's because I made sure we did temp tax uh, cut, I think. Or maybe not. Just because I wanted to get to 104 billion growth just so that by the end of the month, because that's one of our obligations to reach right now. Animation Civil War. Ooh. We're doing okay on this for now. Economic progress. Military progress is not bad either. Uh, so let's go over there and keep that one open. Um, we're still doing pretty well. 95% uh, coalition strength. Home front's not bad. CIA, can we get any more political power? No, we can't yet, so. Other than that, we're doing really okay. Oh, actually, you know what? Let's go back up here. Because I wanted to show you smoke and mirrors. So, right now, say the Supreme Court, four conservatives, five liberals, economic expectations, uh, voters expect our GDP to be 404 billion. So, we just give it another month, and it should be above 404 billion, and we should be okay. So, any humanitarian aid? Sure. If you want to keep that, not, not. We're against the 200 families. If you wonder about this whole at Folsom prison, please go ahead as well. And then the Higher Education Act. Another landmark piece of legislation in President Johnson's Great Society Initiative, the Higher Education Act will make a commitment to the enhancement of university education and federal law implemented by a strengthened bureaucracy. Under the Act, Congress will provide greater funds to the nation's universities while encouraging scholarships and favorable loans to students with skills, but not that much for college. Elementary school is important for the general education, but greater funds towards higher education will improve specialization. England, Scotland, 
Oh, that's nice. Uh, it's like sh sheep to a slaughter. If you want to do about that, please go ahead. Happy November, everybody. Economy-wise, we're 140, 104 or 5. Oh, 405 oh, billion, which is pretty good. Talk to him for several weeks. Two pawn and firestone. Two times of American industry. Oh, look at this. Nice. Um, said about the work. What's Africa's rich land? Packed with fertile soil and water west for natural rubber growth. Firestone extracts rubber tapped from the plantations of Mali. Shipping them off to the plants in Liberia. Though the arrangement that suited Firestone in the past, the immense growth of the company's assets meant that this process become a bottleneck. After talks began when DuPont approached the corporate leadership at Firestone. They made a general gesture and Firestone agreed to their infrastructure deal. DuPont exclusively buy rubber only from Firestone's plantations, excluding other competitors in the field. In exchange, DuPont will provide capital for new highways, train networks, harbors, ports, and ships in tandem with Firestone's own contributions. One condition became paramount for DuPont. Firestone only uses plants for rubber processing. Weeks passed and talks whittled the terms and specifics. The consensus did not change. With hands clasping agreement, a dark circle occluded upon uh, West Africa. 100% not bad. The military stuff, not so much. The warning. Remember that? Please go ahead. Fighting for public schools. Oh, we don't want to click on that. Um, sure. Let's do it. Let's see what happens. I guess Margaret Chase Smith. I think we're going to win, probably. MPP is pretty solid south. Oh, it was, yeah. Good job, President Johnson. 47 million to 40 million. That is, you know, a good chunk of the Midwest. And the tip of New England. Solid south, of course. Hey, 40 Democrats, though. That, wow, the MPP is looking not very good. But, but funding for public schools. Uh, massive first draft of the so-called Higher Education Act was strewn about on the president's desk. Johnson's glasses hung low on his nose, his hand on his forehead. The other gripping page 96 of his document. He had been reading and editing and rereading for hours now, he wasn't quite sure how long. This draft was what he had asked for all right, and it was going to be a darn nightmare to push through Congress. After the rigmarole, uh, rigmarole of the conservatives, after the throwing the president through over the writing and passage of the ESEA, then it's intended very likely that the HEA will receive sharp criticism from Budge Hawks in Congress. Furthermore, directly alienating many colleges could possibly be reviewed as favoritism. With party relations such as they are, committing to the funding plank could very well cause irreparable damage. If such a damage was significant enough, the president's own chances at re-election could be jeopardized. Who cares now? However, Johnson's staunch allies and supporters insist he commit to the university aid program and principle, arguing that the electoral drawback from doing so would be even what worse and non-existent at best. Johnson drew his red pen and marked out a line, a line on the paper. No, this won't do, he muttered to himself, scribbling and correction on the margin. Then again, not everyone could be pleased, and in an effort to try to please everyone was an effort wasted. So, no free society persisted which we did not champion free learnings and knowledge. We've already done enough in the risk regard. We'll do this one. Expand the Atlantic force? Yes, because we can. So right now, we have uh, 30 Democrats, 10 Republicans, and 10 Progressives, so 58 in total, and none of the MPP really care. Um, well... He falls ill, which is okay, whatever. Anything down there? Not too much that we're really concerned about. Go down there, prim volunteers, go ahead on in. All the way down there and just kill them all off. Not bad. At all. This isn't taking forever though. Oh boy. The National Endowment of the Arts. Even though they have little use in the profit minded American economy, the arts are nonetheless a stable for society. To ensure that arts are valued and other crafts and their crafts encourage the great society, President Johnson proposed the creation of a new independent agency to commission works of art. So called National Endowment for the Arts will provide critical funds to ambitious and visionary art projects across the US and work with other government programs to achieve these ends. These operations will revive the nation on a deeper level than the economy. Couldn't hurt us in cost, but get more political possibility. National Endowment of the Humanity. While well, the visual arts are important to maintaining a healthy society, we must also focus on our history, philosophy, and scholarship. The National Endowment for the Humanities will seek, um, <coughs> seek to fill its niche, uh, allocating funds to a range of humanities projects undertaken by libraries, museums, and other public institutions. Since the humanities is such a broad term, the organization will receive substantial but reasonable funding to advance the humanities in the U.S. and its culture. So the election results are in, polls are updated, and Higher Education Act passes, as if we always assumed it would be. Um, we're going about the cost of freedom Pittsburgh ahead too. Oh, that sucks. Uh, then special strength, moderately increased military strength, moderately increased. There you go. Keep up. Um, the ivory towers of American higher education today became a little taller and a lot more open today with the passage of the Higher Education Act. President Johnson, surrounded by the presidents of major colleges, will be signing this act as soon as it reaches his desk. The act's provisions increase scholarship and loan opportunities for deserving needy students, allowing a college education from the province of the wealthy to reach the rest of society. 
More controversial are the provisions regarding federal oversight of the university admissions. The right charges that these measures will mean the dilution of academic standards and federal overreach, while the bill supports claiming the federal monitoring of university admissions is the only way to further reform higher education as well as monitor the success of the act. Senate at ACS Politics 101. Voters in the North, Texas, and California agree. They appreciate this. Voters also will disagree. Replace public with subsidized higher. Uh, way more cost, but better taxable population too. Academic base begins to rapidly improve. Cool. Urban and black voters support the Democratic Party, while rural voters will just are going to hate the hate us. That's pretty, been pretty much the same throughout the entire campaign. We're very strong in pretty much all this stuff. It's pretty cool. Hey, not bad. Academic base not rapidly advancing enough. Hey, a little bit. Of, ooh, let's look at that. Residential election season is over, of course. Oh, yearly deficit. That's not good. Wow. Max out that sign spending. And the next we're just going to do temp tax act two. We're gonna do both of these. First, Brock is PBS, a slice of the Congo. Um, I've heard this before, so if you're in this game, please go right ahead. First broadcast. Um, yeah, we're gonna do this one next. So if you're gonna do this game, please go right ahead. And increase minimum benefits. For our current benefits program, is a welcome for free for the poor, but the most absolutely worst off, even these payments, is not enough. If we left all Americans out of poverty and our nation, we must increase our payments to the poorest through recipients of welfare. Only by giving them the help they need can these people finally be brought out of the poverty trap. Of course, we have a cup of coffee here too, but someone else says, uh, one of the comments was, Free France doesn't have a focus tree, but can you play as Free France and then win the West African War and reclaim France? It's one of the main topics of this update, so I hope, really hope you can. Uh, we'll see if I, or if I remember. We might be able to do that. Oh, hello. Sure. I'll do it anyways. The party's fracturing. Mr. President, I have some good news and I have some bad news. The good news, we push some more of the great society through and the bells are ready for your signature to make them the law of the land. This will, of course, be a great success for the administration and may help many Americans that need it the most. Bad news, though, is that the Republican-Democratic coalition is starting to break. Many of the right-leaning uh, <clears throat> the Republicans are openly starting to back away from you and the coalition, denouncing your efforts to centralize in government and Bolshevism. Some congressmen are even crossing the aisle of the MPP. Well, most of them didn't like the great society in general. They're leaving now. It deals a blow to make your policy seem, at least on the surface, somewhat bipartisan. <coughs> On top of that, now the Republicans are starting to warm to the whole great society. We're starting to push us to go even further, making the plans even more ambitious. They're really starting to sound like Harrington or Henry Jackson. Hey, now don't throw that pen at me. I know you don't like Henry Jackson, but I take it up with the Republicans. I'm just telling you what I've heard. I ain't no MPP. Hey, look at that. If you're wondering about freedom in Indonesia, please go ahead. Good job. Serve the side of Sambalo. Nice. Good job, everybody. My God, when is this going to be done? 90%? Okay, 90% I'm okay with. This is... You, you're you literally not allowed to win here. Which I don't like. At least not, holding it consider, consider, consolidation progress at least 90% will guarantee success of our plans. It's currently 95%. It seems like you can just never win there, man. I don't like it. I really don't like this one. Why don't you guys finish these guys off? Go. Percent, ninety percent. Anything else? All right, you can do that. Very strong on everything except for civil rights, which is it is what it is. Improved through security is not bad. Um, National endowment, of course, the first broadcast PBS. The public broadcasting service is the first nonprofit publicly funded TV broadcast service. As a major part of President Johnson's Great Society project, the newly formed PBS will act as a distributor with various channels under its purview covering topics ranging from children's entertainment to the news. The goal of the organization is to provide accessible and high quality programming to all Americans and hopefully educate the nation's citizens in the process. The job have done. As LBGA, President LBJ, of course, decided the same oath of the office he took four years prior, the feeling he went through. His mind can only be described as satisfaction. He did a darn fine job, all things considered, as a great society. A proven hit, the Republican Democrats were back in top form, and the MPP was still as irrelevant as ever. It not been an easy task to recover from the colossal screw-ups in the last administration, but he came out swinging. As he stood before the crowd, however, he knew that now was the time for tact, not boorishness, and so he set aside his usual bravado for the time being. Unity is the first and foremost principle of our American Union, for who we are are small. Uh, and few against the forces of tyranny or continued liberty must derive from coming out in the strength of our collective will to endure. Yet that true unity cannot be derived from a nation at odds with itself. It is this that I believe that what is a great society must truly strive for and what we've endeavored to strive for these past few years. No longer we need capitalists nor worker nor farmer and clerk struggle against one another, for we may now stand shoulder to shoulder in the interest of increasing the bounty of all. For the many great tragedies of the last few decades, the spirit of the one great indivisible nation stands unblemished. It is my hope that this spirit may never be extinguished, and it is my earnest wish to continue to protect and nurture the spirit. 
We're a nation of liberty and justice, blessed by God, and it's our duty to struggle with toil and tears, ensure that the light of our nation shines on, on my part. I promise you uh, now what I promised the men of my coalition on that sorrowful day in 1963. I will lead and I'll do the best I can. Once more, the crowd roared with appreciation. President Johnson was not a sentimental man, but even he felt the stirrings of pride in his heart. Once more, he had a duty to do these people, and it was his solemn oath to fulfill that duty. Four more years lay in front of him, and there was still a lot of work to do through the efforts of the great society and the efforts of the American people. America was sure to emerge ever greater and ever more united against all that would seek to tear it down both within and without for an ever more perfect union. Come on, academia. Days after the election, the two men shook hands as they entered the Oval Office. Congratulations on your re-election, Mr. President, the first man said. The pleasure's all mine, said President-elect uh, uh, Lyndon Baines Johnson. What well, wasn't to be there to be pleased about? The economy was going up, race rush becoming a thing of the past, and America's largely moved on from the Watergate in Africa. Well, somewhat. Everything's going fine and steady, except Mr. Secretary, began the President as he occupied the residue desk. What well, can you tell me about the ports? The second state of secretary, the uh, secretary of state, bolted from his seat, sitting it scraping across the floor. He immediately turned back to the entrance, saying, I'll notify JCS immediately. Don't what do I look like? I'll write us nut job. President Johnson chuckled. Just in the secretary's chair. I'm not going to escalate if that's what you thought. I've got something bigger in mind. Eyes widening, oh, eyes widening and dawning realization, you mean. I'm not. I want to report on my desk tomorrow morning. Likelihoods, risk assessments, angles of approach, everything you can think I need to know. We'll discuss this in detail with the rest of the cabinet right away. And with that, the handover was a motion. Photogenic. Queen of Lithium. Uh, if you want to this, please go ahead. I've read this one before, definitely. Uh, right now, we are currently at primary school, which is not great. Uh, we want to get to secondary school, and even then, that's not super great, too. But whatever. Let's go PBS. TOPM, the Congressional Upshift. Oh, did I read this before? Huh. Well, if you want to read about this, please go ahead. Have fun. Oh, no, I'm going to read this anyways. 2 p.m. in the Congressional Cafeteria. Beer and Lyndon sat together at a table, enjoying the meal of the day, and just chatting about whatever came to their mind. It was marked as a political meeting in the calendar. It's the opportunity to push your agendas through backroom deals, but both of them knew this wasn't the real reason for the bi-weekly meetings. Even the greatest politicians need to slack off with their fellow colleagues once in a while. And I completely agree with you on this point, Lyndon. The pizza served here is laughably bad, anyways. Can we reschedule our next meeting? I've booked up a holiday trip in Arizona, so I'll be away for the week. <coughs> You're taking a vacation, Barry? That's the first time I've seen you take a vacation in years. Jeez, what happened? I always thought you were too uptight to ever take your mind off your work for a few days. Well, I'm doing a little photography through two or three Phoenix. Feeds just marvels at this time of year. Seeing you St. Mary's Basilica and that leaves an impression that I'll stick with you for years. Sounds fantastic. I know you went back to photography. Didn't you abandon the hobby a few years ago? Back then, I felt like I ran out of motives for my photos, you know. Every major city was suffocating under the impenetrably thick and gray blanket of smog. The Phoenix from my childhood memories, the bright and violent gem, vibrant gem of the Sunbelt, simply didn't match up with what my picture showed, so I quit under the belief that I was just not skilled enough to reveal the true beauty of the place. That's what I thought, anyways. However, the past few years, I've been nothing short of a miracle. The air is slowly clearing, the once barren ponds are gradually getting repopulated, and I believe that I even heard a songbird the other day, for the first time in a decade at least. These so business bigwigs and northern MPP nationalists might fight uh, your environmental plan with everything that you got, but let me tell you, the results have been astonishing so far. A lot of your policies are nonsensical, but what you've done for the nation, or done for the nature of our beautiful nation, is something great that will never be forgotten. Have fun, Barry. Environmental movement will support this. A hardline Republicans and uh, Labor Democrats will support us too. Great. We're going to just lose the roll vote completely. Bongo, bongo, bongo. Uh, hard years and arid years. Oh. I've heard this before. If you want to do this, please go ahead. I think this is just bugged. I hate the West African thing. That's so. I just hate it so much. It doesn't seem like it ever, you know, I don't know. It doesn't seem very great. Oh, I guess go there. Bongo, bongo, bongo. Well, the card game took place every evening, when most of the soldiers of the company were off for a day shifts. Peter looked forward to the time every day for a few hours he could relax. The life of a soldier wasn't for everybody, he found something here in acceptance, brotherhood. Something he hadn't had in a long time. Their conversations were loud, boisterous, and several hours later had become more introspective on what the future held after the fighting. Got a wife at home and a daughter, Jackson was saying. It'll be my first time seeing her. Yeah, same, said another one of them, minus a daughter. Writing letters just isn't the same, you know. Always worried if she'll bother sticking around for me to come home. Don't worry, I'm sure she won't do that, Jackson said, patting him on the uh, shoulder as he played one of his cards. What about you, Peter? The man sitting in your mask. Got something special you have to tell us about back home? Home. Peter resisted a grimace. Now, home was an interesting concept. No, there's no one home. There's no home there for me. He finally said, pausing briefly before the silence finished. Once we're done, I'll stay on. A long pause. Germans left nothing for me in Russia here. I had something that caused a good people. He didn't tell them where he'd come from before. They thought he'd always, they'd always suspected. He always looked down at his cards. I fold. That broke the introspective silence as soon as the game ended. As they said of their last game for the night, Peter mused that while he had, had meant to share what he said, he was glad he did. He might not have a woman or nation returned to when all of this was done, but he was content with that. He had caused no friends, so what more did the, did the man need? Chief Board uh, Negotiations. As the cabinet was signed, digesting the contents of the proposal before him, President Johnson surveyed the room, knowing that Normandy at the moment was giving everyone pause. 
It's been 20 years since the end of the war, gentlemen, President Johnson said. A decade or so since Eisenhower tore up the Kagi Accords and made Hawaii to the Union. Now it's our turn to finish what he started. The proposal to send up to Japan at last and demand negotiations over the treaty ports of San Francisco and L.A. will be the most ambitious and consequential diplomatic initiative by the United States in their lifetimes. Uh, the eyes of the world and of the American electorate will be scrutinizing them under a microscope. There will be no room for failure. The Japanese simply wouldn't fall. It was clearly holding the poorest halfway across the world a diplomatic nightmare impossible to secure was increasingly unattractive. I'm just going to America push without being pushed aside by Japan in return. It will take the political power of the American government to ensure the successful return of the ports while giving way to the... Uh, the giving away the house of the Japanese is the process, but a few concessions here and there might be useful in making demands further down the line. Let's make history, gen gentlemen. Yeah. Hypothetical budget drafts. Safety net. Uh, nobody left behind. Uh, the troubles are many. Yeah, this is really earlier. Uh, it's in the nature of history that uh, mankind we must face endless struggle across both Atlantic and the Pacific. Billions of people live under the unimaginable cruelty. A life more bleak and painful than that of even the worst off American. Face down annihilation every single day. Living in the hopes that cool heads will prevail even the most aggressive of nations. In times such as these, it can seem like nothing we can do will ever be enough. Seeing the Oval Office, President Johnson contemplates the nature of the world. And what we can do, uh, what we're doing can hold a candle to the darkness. Well, if you're about that, this, please go ahead. I've read this plenty enough times. Uh, here, just do this. That's a big old group. Big old breaking group. Save just in case. Yeah, some more coffee. Counter offer, no one's in the lead, that's good. Forty billion, not bad. It went down and down. It kind of trickled down there from there. They proposed some location. We'll take the Japanese offer. You remember that? Let's go ahead. So good. Come on. Someone is set. All right. I got four hundred political power. That's pretty good, man. I'm not gonna lie. Japanese man oil. We remember about that? Let's go ahead. Pretty simple rise, we'll get there eventually, give them as much oil as we can. You always want to do that one. Use Japanese stocks begin. And a public broadcasting service is what I really want to read about. That's what I really want to get up to. Complete success. The negotiations worked. Benny. Good. First broadcast of PBS on this whole bill in terms of trade. The Japanese representatives uh, wanted to lay down the terms of restart trade between our respective series of influence. The proposed mutual end of the embargo would have attached proposed tariffs reductions to the agreement. Or friends, a mutual treaty. It only named sectors that were lowering their tariffs favors Japan at our expense, making it very unbalanced in their favor. Our brothers are divided on the response, such as things we think take a harsh stance on the issue and demand an end of the embargo's free con uh, conditions. All this part of the massive benefits of signing a deal compared to the most cost accepting Japanese conditions. As you do, can't risk losing a deal. Good attempt. Um, really in the lead. Smiles all around, why not? So, right now, with this whole deal, we're going to probably do well with Medicare and Medicaid. At least that is the goal and hope. Smiles all around, it's good. Public broadcasting service. Dan, I've never been so excited. As television operations go, this one will be relatively standard. The only difference between it all and the work you've done for the Washington news broadcasters was that this would be nationwide. President Johnson approved the public broadcasting service only a few months ago. A coalition of small broadcasting networks have been gotten together, and here he stood ready for the first broadcast of PBS. Every words from the new president of the service, Hartford Gunn. He stood opposite Dan, who operated a camera. Gunn shifted, shuffled some papers on the desk and straightened his tie. There was only one minute until the first broadcast. Dan could feel his heart pounding as the clock slowly ticked down. Dan raised his arm five, live in five, four, three, two. The screen showed the broadcast became consumed with the service's logo. PBS came a disembodied voice from the screen, be more. A victory for... Educate. The Medicare and Medicaid Act. And the Medicaid and Medicare Act passes by a vote of... But the voice of the President of the Senate was cut off as cheers from the gallery. And among the supporting senators, overwhelmed his voice. Uh, this moment would be life-changing for millions of Americans and the news of the bill's passage spread across the country. While facing strong opposition from conservatives, both in the RDC and the NPP, the bill survived and will now reshape the entire country for the better. 
The act establishing two programs, Medicare and Medicaid, Medicare was available to elderly citizens and is paid for via a broad-based payroll tax. It covers a variety of health care costs, including long-term care through reimbursements to providers. Medicaid is a program operated jointly with participating states that offer a huge breadth of reimbursements for health care services, but only covers the categorical poor. That is to say, only those poor who are working or pregnant or elderly or their families of a particular size. Well, a massive step before for America, the bill does have laws. Some Americans remain without health insurance, with calamitous health outcomes potentially arising for many while for others. The health care they do receive is either of poor quality due to a lower reimbursement rate compared to private insurance or still too expensive. And the Johnson administration is going to build a truly great society, though. They must follow the victory, this victory with another, a step in the right direction. So we replace low-income protections with universal coverage, more political power, monthly population stability, way more cost, but better monthly uh, poverty change, and way better monthly health care quality change, which is cool. Growth increased by 0.25%. And like normal, nativists and especially rural voters are really going to hate us. But if you'd like to read about reading about the treaty reports, uh, please go right ahead, because uh, I've read them before. So Very nice. The end of an era. We get a replace a ray of hope with daring a dream, which is even better for stability and war support, recruitable population factor, and daily political power. We had significant oil concessions, which sucks, but doesn't really matter too much. Create 80 uh, chromium import for us from Japan, and they'll, and they'll lift the embargo on us and get one more proposition, gain a lot of support over a great victory. All voters will tra uh, support the Democratic Party for over 16 weeks, which is pretty darn good. With immediate change in partisanship, which we'll are more uh, international on issues of foreign policy over 16 weeks as well. And, uh, own uh, San Francisco, ports of San Francisco and LA, and decrease tensions uh, by 10%. That's not bad. Hello. Total? Hmm. Ah, the winds of change in the Pacific. Beautiful, my friends. Absolutely beautiful. One more proposition. If you're about that, please go ahead. Submit the proposal. Let's see. Ah, the ports of LA and San Francisco. Well, San Francisco and LA. Um, what else do we have down here? Oh, yeah. Little Congolese. Yeah, by this point, I think we're doing pretty darn well. They, they, it looks like they can't really stand up to us, so I'm not super concerned at this point. Uh, what's going on? Just auto balance it. Whatever. I'm not super concerned. We're just building a lot of roads up. Uh, we need more prisons. Oh, and they've taken those guys out. Nice. Mm, army bases, huh? We throw them there. Prisons, like such in, as in Ohio, because they have a lot of criminals in Ohio. My God, who likes Ohio? Um, Illinois. Good God, who the heck likes Illinois? Jesus Christ. Um, uh, school coverage. Illinois again. Ugh. Schools in Illinois? Oh, we got some good schools there. But Illinois? Ugh. Sorry. Well, not really. Oh, we're in Russia. Uh, well, I think I read this one before. So going to do this, please go ahead. It's not super unique. Back in control. Ah, about to Russia. If you want about that too, please go ahead. Uh, or round two as well, please go ahead as well. But back in control. News reached the president soon after the announcement the Congo war was over. For the first time in a while, there was good news from there. Or as much good news as one could hope for given the catastrophe that had taken place since the OFM mandate had collapsed. It turned out that the government had been established by the last remnants of the OFM mandate in contrast to Patrice Lumumba's own nation state had been able to resist conquest. But not only resist, but win. The entire Congo was now united under them and they were working to establish sustained control over the nation and region. It was not an easy task, but the president was now optimistic that they would not see, that they would see more success than they had originally hoped for. Especially good since it meant that America's path, along with the wider OFN to Africa, was not shut. With a friendly government, they can now reestablish American OFN presence and authority in Africa. This collapse of the mandate had been a disaster, and in most cases, that would be the end of it. But now they had a second chance to try again. It was imperative that it not be wasted. America's hold endures. Nice. More internationalist. Meals moderately shit to support the Republican Party, which is kind of weird. And they join us here and get more political power out of this, though. Victory of the Federal Republic of the Congo. Nice. Round two. Unconditional retro system of the Hawaiian Islands to the rights of rightful government. E. And. Lofting strong, 95%. Honolulu Accords. We are currently leading, which is awesome. Um, what is this? Hawkishness Withers. Oh. Oh! Peacetime map of recovery. Okay. That's cool. Increased by 1.5%. I like that a lot, actually. I didn't know it actually would increase. That's really nice, actually. Um, yeah, I read this earlier, so if you want to do this again, please go right ahead. It decreases hardline Republican support, as well as responsible Republican support. Um, but that's alright. But our victories are... Oh, maybe we should do this one first. It unifies the OFN a little bit more, more stability and whatnot, and supports more. There will always be darkness, but there also must be always be light. The U.S. is a land of the free and home of the brave, a land of endless opportunity, where all men may freely pursue their own betterment in the name of the American dream. As long as your values are maintained, the light of liberty will shine on, and the hope of freedom and justice will never perish. That we try to make our world better, even against the darkest threats. Oops, my bad. I pressed enter by accident. Uh, by the darkest threats. 
Oh, we have ever faced proves that there is goodness in man. And President Johnson comforts himself in soul, so we can always count on the spirit of America to lead humanity to a better future. Nice. Ooh. Call a bluff. Uh, let's do the good news first, President Johnson said of the Situation Room. Uh, Secretary of State spoke up unprompted. There's one that uh, took you and shut the whole thing down right there and there. After a, a beat, he said, uh, My colleague in the Prime Minister's cabinet has sensibly convinced him not to. Ooh, we're going to improve academic base, please go right ahead. That just means the jabs didn't roll over the slide as such. Near the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Hawkeshaw scanned scanned the Secretary from top to bottom as if searching for excuses to exploit. I thought that counts as bad news. It means the Empire is willing to stick with us with, uh, with what we've negotiated thus far, despite my reminder there are people's wishes, maybe even its own governments. So that's why the bad news then. Cut to the chase, Mr. Secretary. Mr. Secretary. Where do you really stand, us or them? Gentlemen, the President's chastised member broke through the long, simmering argument, tampering it with the, the, the dignity his office upwarded. Having presented accusations that treats him from being actioned, here the Secretary to back out of the negotiations themselves, America sticks to the plan. Agree to the Empire's leading terms. Well, obviously we don't want to do this one because we get the event the Empire, the Sun withdraws, and we don't want the Sun to withdraw, so. Global conflict stratus. Cool. What are you looking over here? Oh, macro. 30 billion, not bad. 5% growth and ocean pacified. If you wonder about that, please go ahead. Peace in our time. Oh, you can't read that. So, Hawaii becomes militarized. We beget Hawaii, but becomes a militarized zone. Uh, he gets his original name back. Toko is renamed to Honolulu. Oh, nice. The ability to project power in the West Pacific now. And support the Democratic Party again for 16 weeks. And we'll more internationalists on the issue of foreign policy. Everyone else in, will like us that too. Uh, the Japanese American tensions will decrease by 50% for total tension of 12%. Get 75 more political power. Uh, during a dream is replaced with a new dawn. A beautiful thing. Uh, they're still trying to max out social spending and whatnot. 39 billion is not enough. Oh, beautiful. The winds and change in the Pacific. Beautiful. Conflict status is looking pretty good. Nothing could go wrong, right? Right. Totally. Totally. Oh, what is this? Our work is never done. Downplay the national progressive rule. Oh, sure. Bridge the last of the black vote. Our support in the African American community will increase. Okay, and plug the gaps in welfare. Priority rate improved. Plug the gaps in miscellaneous welfare miscellaneous costs. A little more cost, but improves uh, us uh, just a little bit. Okay. I'll do this next time, too. So, we're to improve. Um, the rule voters will help with the national. Dixie Cat support will decrease by 15. I'll do it anyways. We're doing well enough. Smoke and mirrors. Dick's Crest support is waning. Call Russell. Okay. Talk it out. Okay. We don't want that one, though. Increase, decrease. Civil rights, national spirit. Um, how else are we looking here? 95% strong, waning, terrific. Strong, lofty, durable, terrific. All right. State Supreme Court still slightly liberal. Voters expect a uh, GDP to be 44, 4440 billion, and debt as percentage of GDP should be less than 29.2 percent. Operation of success. If you want to that, please go ahead. The Neo Silver Act. Oh boy. Ah, uh, President Johnson quietly leafed through the proposed bill. Copy the New York Times left haphazardly on the desk. Printed in bold letters. Read at top. Silver shortage. Oh boy. Well, we're in this mess, Senator. How do you propose to get us out of it? Johnson asked, looking up uh, at the best speckled figure sitting in front of him. Uh, the proposed Silver Reserve Act will grant the presidency the ability to uh, suspend the convertibility of the dollar to silver, Mr. President. Refloating silver, or free floating the dollar, will let the Fed put more money into the circulation, putting an end to the whole crisis. Bennett replied, or passed him a copy of the bill to one of his aides. Johnson nodded, how soon can he get this past the Senate? Today or tomorrow, where there are a few holdouts, but not enough to matter. Well, then the President offered the Senator a hand, it has been a pleasure working with you, Senator. Bennett took the hand, might as well, Mr. President, despite our differences. I'll be seeing the Chairman later today, any recommendations? I'd focus on curtailing inflation, though I'm sure many of our more liberal friends would push for a more aggressive monetary policy, Bennett replied evenly. It would be my preference, but the choice is yours, Mr. President. Keep the chairman informed, Senator. Oh, man, that's not bad. I, I, I'll have to disagree. Inflation would decrease by 0.5%. Okay, so where are we at? 5.8%. That's actually better than what we've had for a while. I knew it, I saw it. Good military austerity. Would it be worth it? Honestly, not really. Oh, well. Um, so inflation decreases by 0.5, increase growth by 0.53, inflation decreases by 0.9, so that's overall an increase of 1.2. And this is actually, hmm, <clears throat> if you just add them up, basically you get 0.95. You get, technically you get more growth, which is very good in the long term, but you know, we can decrease inflation by 0.9%. Oh, that's, that increased by 1%. Sometimes you reload that or open it up. 
That's not bad. 29% de debt reduction, not bad. Increased minimum benefits. Nobody left behind. We can't do that one yet. The Doctor Corps, though. Yeah, why not? Inspired by the Teacher's Corps, we will also establish the so-called Doctor's Corps. Like their educational uh, counterparts, men and women of the Doctor Corps take part in outreach programs in private areas, filling the gaps in the local health care provisions and giving cheap treatments to the poorest who need it. Aspiring doctors fresh out of college could really, really seek internship in the program to gain valuable experience and to give back to the communities, though they would likely be led by qualified professionals whose work would be subsidized, of course, by us. Balance of budget. Budget surplus. Should be able to do that. Well, let's do this one. Make progress in civil rights. Well, we will eventually do this one, too. Uh, but balancing the budget... We'll do that once as soon as we do temp tax hike one more time. So that'll be good. As long as I remember, I might forget. Uh, response for Republican? Sure, why not? This will be easy to do. Response for Republicans are going to love us. Because they should. 42 billion surplus, so 6% growth. I mean, obviously, we could do be doing better, but we have way more debt, but you know, whatever. It is what it is. But we're still going to improve, which is exactly what we want. Oh, what is this? Mid teams are plus seven people in order. Yeah. Well then. Close out of this one. Oh, actually, no, let's not close out of this one. Well, we do need progressive support too, so I don't really want to hurt them. And I don't want to hurt the Republicans too much, even though we probably could. But it won't really matter that much. Let's just start doing that stuff too. That's fine. The last one, the uh, SS United States. If you remember about that, please go ahead. The end of an era. Less than 100 billion in debt, my friends. 420 billion blazing in uh, GDP. Not bad. Stonewall bus, remember that? Please go ahead. And ex Beach Boys ex associate charged in Melson Melcher murders. Thank God they caught him. There's a routine raid. Carry on. We shall overcome. There you go. Fuel to the fire. Kick lines of tear gas. An incredible sight. Uh, 43 billion, not bad. 23.6% debt, not bad. We definitely need more growth, but we'll get there. Alright, so we got the doctor score going on. Uh, hypothetical budget drafts. Our plans for new healthcare system will need funding, and if we are to win people over, we must prove that such a plan is feasible. We'll get our economic advisors working on drawing up some budgets and showing critics that we can make this work. As the most economically sound nation on the planet, it shouldn't be too difficult to gather the necessary money, but we'll still need to convince people that it's a worthwhile use of the funds. A radical proposal. Now we've laid down the necessary groundwork and drawn up our plans. It's time to formally draft a bill. The creation. Oh, if you're going to buy the Stockholm Conference, please go ahead as well. You know, how the Germans respond. The creation of a government funded national standard of healthcare has never before been attempted in the United States. And natural skeptics are vocal and numerous. We need to fight our case hard all the way through the, to the end. Using all the evidence and models we have established to argue our point. It will be difficult, and given the gravity of our task, we must brace for disappointment. And if we're successful, however, we can usher in a whole new era of health and well being for all Americans. So we some of the progressives to our side. Nice. Controversy that follow the RDC for 28 weeks and a coalition unity by minus 5%. Alright. Still very weak on civil rights, but whatever. Still waning, but delayed German hotline installations. When we proposed the Germans install a hotline to the White House, we were not expecting such resistance, much resistance from Germania. After all, it was practically a non concession. Both sides had nothing to lose by it and everything to gain. And it somehow Borman has now managed to turn the d issue into a debate. Despite our insistence on the points of the issue, the Germans have refused to commit to a hotline, merely saying that such a thing could be a possibility in the future, if the situation permits. While well, this may mean they will be willing to approach the issue once relations have normalized, it could also mean they are unwilling to fully commit to detente. Should we press them to give an answer? We insist on they are tall. A minor setback. Well, I guess it's a minor setback. Oh, it succeeds. Oh, this is weird. The President of the United States, President Johnson, gently gripped the Fuhrer's hand and shook it, thinking of all the men who died in South Africa with this agreement, hopefully, such a thing would never happen again. The old family was safe from any further attacks, at least from the East. But the Japanese of the West began to mobilize against them, meanwhile, the Emperor would be facing the mind of two superpowers, not just one. The free world may very well have just been saved in this room. Jack Kennedy had launched a lauded across the nation for solving the Hawaiian Missile Crisis. True, but what would the American public think of the Commander in Chief who had just stopped the Breton Missile Crisis before it even happened? It's certainly been an eventful day for that, that was for sure. As the American delegation was escorted by the conference hall by the Secret Service, however, the president happened to lock eyes with Borman, sitting him amongst his fellow Nazis who were babbling excitedly in German. The way to what the president had finally done hit. America had, for the first time ever, struck a deal with the crowds. A fascist power, brutal and cold as a repression of all dissent, the world's beacon of freedom had shown itself willing to compromise with them. Suddenly, what had happened to the boys in South Africa is no longer a reassuring thought. Nonetheless, the president shook himself to dread, placed their doubts aside, and stepped through conference hall doors. Conference hall doors. Immediately, a gag of reporters swarmed the group, flashing cameras and asking questions. 
A single reporter's voice was heard above the rest, asking the president what had occurred behind those closed doors. The president took a breath and answered, We made history. Cool. Very, very nice. But in the meantime, you know, I don't know. 42 billion is pretty nice. Oh. I have 95 billion in debt. It ain't bad, man. 22.65%. Very nice. Six percent. Nope. Wow. Social spending more than half. At the minimum. What's we got here? The Great Society. That's nice. That's real nice. Hmm. Developed healthcare, huh? Oh, there goes the French state. French Civil War, huh? Can we help them out? Because I know someone wants us to help them out, but. I don't think we can. God dang mess. But it's still a friend, so what do you expect? Work on healthcare. Rumors and leaks have been coming from the administration that worked towards the budget for a universal healthcare plan was currently going ongoing. Well, the press secretary and the president himself won't say so officially. The speculation is growing in Washington and around the country and assume that the U.S. will join virtually every other industrialized nation on the planet for a full and comprehensive medical insurance uh, plan. While there's still a long way to go before the plan will be presented to the American people, and to convince the majority that it's in their best interest, the market swing in the National Progressive Pact is already capitalizing on its outcome, claiming the universal health care is thanks almost entirely to their pushing and continuing support. The Marxists have set their support increase across the nation already. We haven't even finished putting it together yet. The right to life. In a land of great wealth, families must not live in hopeless poverty. In a land rich in harvest, children must not go hungry. In a land of healing miracles, neighbors must not suffer and die unattended. In a great land of learning and scholars, young people must be taught to read and write. Uh, President LBJ inaugural address with their health care plan secured and other pillar of the great society falling into place. No longer will people be left out of pocket when they need to help the most. The right to laugh is a sacred sanctum must be granted to all Americans no matter the cost, and as a total overall of our health service gets underway, America can begin to reap the benefits. It'll take a while before things are at maximum operational capacity, but we can soon expect a massive increase in the quality of public health. Negotiations have been pending. French exiles and those who in the fort back home wait with bated breath. The plan is clear. And reminiscent of the Odyssey itself. Sail from West Africa along the curves of the Atlantic coast and into the Mediterranean to reach a final destination in southern France. It's only one issue. That of the rock that controls the world, Gibraltar. Without Iberian consent to all sail several hundred ships and warships through the strait, the dream of reclaiming France may well be dead in the cradle. Across the next week, French and Iberian diplomats will meet in secret in Madeira, discussing conditions and terms between the two nations that may allow this lead to pass. While historical rivals in fear of renewed France, eclipsing Iberia's shadow of the talks, who tones uh, so far seems to be generally cordial and sportive. Madrid has led under the colossus of the German Reich for almost 20 years and the potential to rip apart the Nazi dominion. However, most of Europe is highly tantalizing. Only time will tell the Iberians go forward in this great reversal of the historical trend that it is so far allied itself to the German cause. Marianne cause? Will Madrid answer? Maybe. But the right to life, of course. I'm safety now. Uh, individuals and businesses that are most financially at risk can easily be pushed over the edge by sudden calamity or monetary setback. We must ensure that these people have access to financial safety net. A means of shielding them from the worst impact of a sudden and unexpected expense. Tell me about it, my god. This can be achieved by introducing legislation to improve the availability and quality of savings accounts and insurance, so that people might always have some money to fall back on. Oof, man, yeah. If you haven't already, recommend it to uh, invest in your retirement account if you possibly can. Ah, oh, here we go. Even with a surplus, that's really good. 6.5% growth is not bad. That's almost interest rate's nothing. It went down by 0.3%, which is not great, but. 46? Jesus Christ. Oh, coalition support from hardline Republicans. 85% hardline Republicans and Dixiecrats. Hardline Republicans. And the 60% hawkishness. Hardline Republicans. Pursues deregulation. We could try it. We're not deregulating anything. Dixiecrats, huh? Well, what is this one? Uh, Please, Reuther. Civil rights spirit. Work hours minimum wage policy. I have to give her law and order. Well, I put my phone on squad. Oh. We failed? Strong, lofty, durable, lofty, strong, terrific, clean. Oh, it went up. We're not if anything, we're more doing more regulations of sorts. A radical proposal. I love it, radical. Right to life. Let's take a look, see. Waning, waning. Well, that's not good. 
Uh, response to Hardline and Responsible Republicans. Huh? Mm. Alright, so the Republicans really hate that. Democrats mostly love it. And the progressives are all like, yeah, and the MVPs are like, you know, like, yeah, we're electing Republicans. Our administration has only acted in the best interest of the American people. We seem to have gone too far for some within our own party. A number of Republicans have public distanced themselves from some of our more, more recent messages, leading to a decline in support for the president from a segment of the electorate. Unfortunately, this weekend's our ability to implement the change America needs. Ah, oh, screw them. Oh, crap. Well, how does that affect us now? It doesn't. Hmm. Okay, do that anyways. 91% still very good. Strong, waning. Hello. Terrible, terrific. Hmm. A little right to life. There's a lot of support for the MPP. George Wallace, bless his heart. I really want to see if we can do this one very well, though. Because after that, we'll be doing a safety net. And then pursuit of happiness, great society. Everyone's gonna love it. Move a new dawn, huh? Oh, that'd be good. Expand its civil rights. The right to life act passes. On the steps of the Capitol building, President Lyndon Johnson breathed a deep lung full of crisp air. Or the crowning achievement of his presidency in his hand, he scrawled his signature on the bottom of the passage. The right to life bill became long cheers from the surrounding crowds and immediately erupted. For each and every one of them, this law was completely life changing. Under the right to life to act, Medicaid became a full opt-in program that allowed anyone to access the program's benefits. When not achieving full cost coverage, as more radical progressives would have preferred, the law did finally solve the problem of lacking health care access, allowing every American to have affordable health care through Medicaid. Universal health care finally existed in America, and then Johnson and the Democrats, with some help, had, had the ones to do it. Inwardly, Johnson was thrilled at this triumph. They say it would be impossible, too ambitious for a single president, no matter his mastery of the Senate. When historians look back on American history, he thought he looked out over the cheering crowds of his supporters. He knew he'd be ranked among its titans. After all the work he'd done, he thought it was... Uh, the least he deserved. A smile grew on his face as he greeted grateful citizens, n many sharing how this law would specifically help them. Maybe this wasn't a great society yet, Johnson reflected, but it was closer than ever. And he could be proud of the work he had done. It would replace universal coverage with total coverage. Wait, just tiny more co policy costs per capita, which is not bad. Better health care and monthly poverty change. Uh, more political power. Hardline Republican response for Republican support goes down, which is it's not good, but, though, but um, GDP growth will increase. Urban voters will trend more democratic, as well as union voters, and the fascism will grow. Expensive rights. Now it's turn on to turn our attention to fellow Americans who have long been suffering under oppression. The able groups that cause this misery from them would align with the enemy of our country who's ever invaded and occupied by them. That's what we must be vigilant fight for our black population, of course. Ooh, with this. African Americans must be free in all aspects in order to combat extremism, and we will make sure that African American population African American population is free in all ways possible. God, we're gonna kill our Republican support. A vote in hand. Every day ensure the future success of a party in the face of extremism from the MPP must go and assist the African American community in making sure they are able to vote in every election. So many southern states within the Union are still doing everything they can, such as literacy tests, poll taxes, and even mass lynchings to prevent African Americans from exercising the right to vote. We must put an end to this crime of oppression that we as a party have allowed to fester for so long. If our party supports a black American, black Americans will be happy and lower the Republican Democratic coalition in the future. Nice. Balance budget. Uh, you know what? We're gonna go nuclear too then. Get a bit nuky. All across the nation. Growing socialism too. Some of our detractors measures taken to implement the Great Society. Uh, board on socialism. Yeah. Uh, to the Marx, this is a good thing. And moreover, they're the ones responsible for it, putting pressure on the Johnson presidency to actually enact laws which will help the working class. Not very convincing, but uh, the Marxists uh, are taking credit anyways, no matter what. And the piggybacking on a success to grow their own movement. Is it really a place for socialism in How long literacy America? tests? Literacy tests have been around since the 1890s. They've made sure that Afro Afro Americans could not vote because of this demand from the various state governments. They haven't reset the entire the Constitution to be able to read great classics that not even any poor Southern white man was ever required to do. Even though it's important for the American population to be able to read it to be more informative of who it was to vote for. This entire pact has only been used to disenfranchise African Americans in the South and secure the continued vote of extremists who wish to ruin the American way of life. Let's write a provision that will ban these tests in the bill once for all, defining social special provisions. The Voting Drive Act can possibly make several, can, can possibly contain several other provisions. 
uh, that make sure that various southern states are unable to pass changes to voting laws that can disfranchise and prevent African Americans from voting. Those states would require federal approval for voting law changes. This would require secure more of the black vote for the Republican Democratic Coalition, however. The opposite would be bad for some of our Democrat colleagues who represent Southerners who are loyal to a party. Implementing these special provisions would most likely enrage white Southerners who vote for our party and have them possibly switch to the MPP instead. It's up to us to decide if we really want to secure black votes while possibly losing our white Southerner base in the South. American mom. If you're about that, please go ahead. We need to beat me neither. The Voting Rights Act. The Voting Rights Act is ready to be passed. Passed. A bill will be allowing our peace legislation that will be free or will free more of American people from legal oppression. Our bill is protecting, will protect voting rights for all Americans, including whites and racial minorities of all colors, literacy tests, poll taxes, various punishing clauses, and other forms of discriminatory racism within our electoral process will be eliminated. Many white Americans in the South will rage, but we will push forward and we will become a stronger union. All will become stronger and better people as a result. Many states will resist, but those states will submit to federal law. Our country cannot wave in the face of racism and biogatry, and we will make sure of it. The Debating the Voting Rights Act. Act. Today, Congress convened to discuss the terms of a bill of a proposed Voting Rights Act. The bill is designed to provide general provisions for the prohibition of racial discrimination in the local and state level voting. Despite fierce opposition for the Nationals and the muffled grumbling within the Republicans, we have managed to decide on a number of these provisions already. This includes forbidding the implementation of any sort of voting qualification, priority requisite, or any other act of interference against a person's right to vote on the basis of race, color, or language. A debate has arisen on the matter of certain special provisions that may be added to the bill. These provisions include legally requiring all jurisdictions to provide election materials to voters in multiple languages, allowing federal oversight in any state or local level, change to election laws, and the appointment of federal examiners to oversee voter registration functions to make sure the provisions are being implemented. The debate has grown fierce while the Nationals and some Republicans arguing that these provisions amount to federal tyranny. While the progressive MPP insists that they are absolutely necessary to protect the voting rights of America's most vulnerable, many of the Democrats, meanwhile, argue that a compromise would be best, allowing some special provisions in return for some conservative amendments. How strong these provisions are, if they are implemented at all, will need to be decided before we can take the bill to vote. Too many provisions, and the Republicans are likely to complain, and too few, and their progressives will not be happy. What course should we take? We need full equality. Add the provisions. Why not? As you can see on screen, um, almost all the R and Ds and all the progressives are like, heck yeah, but the Nationals are like, no, but we're like, who cares? What happy March, everybody? We're campaigning for the R D party right now, and uh, we're still at minus point three percent of party change, roughly, roughly or so. <clears throat> Much more onto the breach. Beacon of Darkness, reshuffle the police force. Hmm. For those worthy. A good RDC campaign. Good to hear. Very good to hear. So, right now, we're going to get more Democrats. I think this is broken. This isn't. I guess, no, it doesn't, it's not broken. I guess we technically did get the por tree ports back and whatnot, so. That makes actually a lot of sense. Yeah. Oh, endorse Kirkpatrick for 42. Uh, sure, why not? Anything else you really care about? Not really. Um, anything up there? Not really. Global conflicts. African quagmire. Still kind of going. Once more into the breach. Business and public facilities within the South will follow our new laws. I don't care how much they'll cry and scream of federal oppression. They'll not prevent blacks and other minorities from being able to access businesses for needed purchases. And public facilities for needed assistance in their daily lives. I'll personally send federal observers in and necessarily the National Guard and force the law if I have no choice. Time to use a bully pulpit on these states. And or shuffle the police force. State and local police forces within the various troublemaking states in the South will make sure federal newer state laws are enforced. The past is forced ignorance uh, of the law, as well as encouragement of police brutality against African Americans from our local and state police is outright criminal. This oppression will be dismantled. I'll personally send federal investigators to have police departments either change or act themselves, or force states to ma fire massive amounts of disobedient police officers. They remain brutal towards African Americans and refuse to enforce the law when it does not suit the race of Southern. The bully public must continually be used. The Voting Rights Act passes, so look at that. Let's look at that just a little bit. The news of the Voting Rights Act uh, passage through the Senate meant or hit the nation like a lightning bolt. Two African Americans admit them that their dreams of political participation were solidifying and that the powers of the federal government, long haul, were apathetic to their cause and finally began to push for that emancipation. For Southern politicians, particularly the right wing of the MPP, the act is another nail in the coffin of traditional America, but their harassed sphere has fallen deaf ears. Uh, proof jacket. There's nice. The bill is championed in the Senate by many of the RDC senators who, um, as well as progressive MPP members, who united to send the bill to President Johnson's desk. The president himself is extremely pleased calling it the next necessary step in rebuilding a just America. Many progressive and liberal Americans rejoice as they see the Johnson administration's promises of a great society becoming a little more true. The bill's impact will be immediately noticeable as the barriers of political participation by black Americans are swept away by private and federal litigation. Attorney General Katzenbach has already issued warnings to Southern governments regarding new federal enforcement and a wave of voter registration by new previously suppressed voters have already begun. The political landscape of America is shifting and only time will how the pieces will fall. America's promise of justice to become all a bit more true. Increase a sense of civil rights, increase growth by a tiny amount. The African American vote can finally be turning on in forest. Urban voters and black voters will really support us. Black voters will 
absolutely increase the turnout for us, our nativist voters will increase, uh, support the Nationalist Party. Temporary support from other senators is cleared. More decisions related to the Great Society programs are now available. Nice. Yeah, well, that's not bad. 5% growth. Um, I don't think we can max out. Oh, yeah. We can always max out science. Science. Where are we at for the special spenders? 20% more research speed. Plus 3 research facilities monthly change. Is that as high as you can go? That might be. More money. Um, nothing up there, really. Oh, we're weak on civil rights, but you know what else is new. But I think we're going to end the episode there. We'll probably end this campaign, maybe in the next episode. So far, I think we're doing really quite well. Less than 70 billion in deficit. Nice. But if you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link like usual. And I will see you tomorrow, as we'll probably finish out LBJ's campaign once again. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous poverty-reduced rest of your day.